Finding Oz is the true story behind the great American story. It's about how this one man, L. Frank Baum, somehow created The Wizard of Oz. I've always loved the 1939 movie, Who Doesn't? When I was growing up, it was like the children's Super Bowl, this big annual event. And later on, I got hooked by the original novel, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. And for a long time, I've had this question in the back of my mind, how it all came to be. But it wasn't until just a few years ago when I found myself reading the novel again, this time out loud, to my second grade daughter at bedtime. And these questions kept coming up. And at the end of the book, there's this one paragraph bio of Frank Baum, and it was just perplexing to me. He failed at this series of careers, and then suddenly at age 42, he writes The Wizard of Oz. I set out to find out more, and on the internet, all you see are these um, myths about Baum that he must have been on some drug trip, that he got lost in the poppy field somewhere. I also found this myth that The Wizard of Oz is a parable of politics, of the populist movement in the 1890s. So these myths only deepen the mystery for me, and I wanted to find out what was true and what wasn't. So I set out on this road of research, and I went to all the places that Frank Baum lived. I went to libraries where I could search archives of his letters, look up his old newspaper writings. I also interviewed some of his descendants. I found that the icons of Oz were really inspired on two distinct levels, the physical level and the spiritual level. For instance, the Yellow Brick Road. I found an actual section of a Yellow Brick Road that Frank Baum actually walked on. But then I thought, what does it mean? Well, it turns out Frank Baum embraced a New Age faith called Theosophy, which was this fascinating amalgam of Eastern philosophy and Western science. And it speaks of a golden road to enlightenment. So what I was finding was The Wizard of Oz is not a political parable, but really a spiritual quest. The next example is the Tin Man. I visited the company that Frank Baum ran when he was a young man, and the company's still in business. It's called Baum's Castorine, and they make cans of lubricant for all kinds of machines, and this is what partly inspired the physicality of the Tin Man. But what does the Tin Man really mean to us? The Witches of Oz. I visited the house that still stands near Syracuse, and this is the house of Frank Baum's notorious mother-in-law, Mrs. Gage, who was the most radical leader of the women's movement. To her critics, Mrs. Gage was satanic, and her life really reflected Frank Baum's dual view of witches as both good and wicked. In Chicago, I walked the remains of the Chicago World's Fair of 1893, which was Frank Baum's inspiration for the Emerald City of Oz. He visited many times, but what I wanted to find out is what happened there. Then there was the wizard himself, the mysterious man behind the curtain. I found new evidence that Frank Baum crossed paths with larger-than-life figures in American history who inspired elements of this character. For instance, the wonder of the wizard is inspired by Thomas Edison, the wizard of Menlo Park. Frank Baum also wrote about P.T. Barnum, the great con man of the age. So if you love The Wizard of Oz, I hope you'll love it even more once you find out about Frank Baum and his journey across America. So that's why I'm excited about sharing Finding Oz with you, because I hope in reading it, you'll see what has really become our national narrative in a whole new light.